What's your name? My name is Margo Jim. Nice. J-I-M, like a man's name. Um, so I thought, well, you know, I was the coordinator of the drive through Art Gallery 30 years ago. So let me go get my scrapbook out okay. and see if I can find out and remember what happened. So I actually have many photographs here of the very first days of the drive through Art Gallery. That was 30 years ago. Yes. And what I would like to do is first read something for people to understand. And let me explain one thing. This is from a, a news article from the Arroyo's a Royal Art Collective's newsletter back in the 1990s. Okay. It was started. I was a founding member of that organization. Um, and I'm going to read this and then I'll go back and explain. Okay. It's the Royal Art Collective receives two grants. This has been a productive month for the Royal Art Collective. We received a grant of $5,000 from Sears Savings Bank for our drive through art gallery. We were given a parking lot wall by the Department of Transportation to use for its pilot program, and we won a grant of $6,000 from the Getty Grant Foundation to hire two college students as full-time interns to work between the drive through art gallery and the land of the serpent, La Tierra de la Culebre. Frank Romero has committed himself to paint five of his magic cars on our wall, and we expect to launch our next segment sometime in June. I myself personally was always fascinated by the writing on the walls of the city of Los Angeles. And I'd see all kinds of different lettering styles, different colors. And I go, where does this come from? What do these names mean? Why is this up here? So my curiosity, I kept talking about it to the art collective and somebody said, why don't you write an article about it on graffiti? Mm -hmm. I go, okay. So I set off across the park to find me somebody down in the river doing graffiti so I could talk to them. Um, and I ran across a very uh, open young man who told me a lot about graffiti, showed me the way, showed me the pieces around the neighborhood, explained everything, and became very foundational in the start of the Graffiti Arts Coalition. And I wrote an article about this, and as a result, the Royal Arts Collective gave us a little seed money to buy some spray paint, and we got permission to do a legal wall um, on York Boulevard, and we did it. So um, anyway, we started the uh, drive through art gallery as one of our projects, and we got that original uh, permission to do one of the walls. And honestly, I don't remember. It's very likely we could have just continued on because nobody in the community minded. Uh, they were all for what we were doing. Mm -hmm. You should have seen those parking lots back in those days. And I have photographs in my book. They were cracked. There were weeds growing up. All the walls were tagged. They looked awful. So we went in with beautiful, bright colors and let the artists do their thing. Mm -hmm. And now if you can imagine, 30 years later, piece after piece has been done there. Old pieces have been gone over by new artists um, and it's gone on for 30 years. So yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that, that it's been part of the community for 30 years, that drive through art gallery. And that's what it was for, to be kind of a museum of, of art, you know, a, wild style kind of art. Look at the 30 years of history of one artist coming in and painting over another artist. Yeah. It's kind of the way it is with public art, whether whether it's sculpture, paintings, it, it can happen. Uh, and sadly that happened. And what about the Frank Romero mural? He did. I have photographs. I worked on that with him. Yeah. It didn't last too long. It was painted out a lot. I don't know what floor went over there and painted that out. I mean, that would be... Which mural are you talking about? Where at? Frank Romero's, his, his mural was on the wall across from the Ebel Club on yeah. Avenue 50. Okay. Yeah. Was that the, the hearts or the cars? That was, what well, was cars and some other imagery. Too. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think you have a picture of that. Yeah, I, yeah. I do have pictures of these things. Um, uh -huh. So anyway, so, but that got painted out fairly fast. I mean, it was up there maybe max five years, I think. Okay. I don't, we didn't, could never find out who did that. Um, too bad. It would be a tourist attraction today. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a well known uh, artist around the world, right? Yeah. Famous, world famous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I think, um, I, yeah, it does happen a lot. But I think, like, for our community at the time, because we're going through, like, gentrification and the erasure of our community, uh, it kind of hit harder, right? Because it was like, 
you know not only are, are you taking our business away you know mm -hmm. you're you're taking our our community away and now you're just taking our art because it, it happened it happened literally like one day like it wasn't just like one wall the register wall it was like three walls so yeah, yeah it kind of hit us hard i understand that and that's why i was so touched by it because i knew what it meant and i knew the background and that's why i came to you um it was definitely symbolic of what's going on here these walls had art and murals uh, painting all up and down and last year uh, the north figaro association made a complaint with the deal's office to have them removed uh, the complaint went to cultural affairs and since these walls were not registered uh, they had to be taken down these walls uh, the walls up behind owls and fashion 21 were also uh, erased uh, from the complaint So, so how do you feel about the murals being raised uh, in the parking lot walls? Well, to be honest, first we felt disheartened, but then we got angry. And the reason for that is we, as artists of color, are, are already at so much of a disadvantage. We are already so underrepresented. So for them to do something like that was more than just, I would say, a slap in the face. It was literally taking away resources and identity from the culture that remains here in Highland Park. I literally grew up in school right across the park, right there. So, I mean, I grew up there and all we had was the Southwest Museum. So I grew up without getting to go to these fancy museums. We didn't have LACMA, we didn't have MOCA, we didn't have any of that, you know? So the art that we grew up exposed to that influenced us and created you know more local artists was the art on the walls it had special significance to us because those were our museums it was literally what they erased was called drive-by murals it was a drive-by gallery of artwork by frank romero and you know there were more that uh, john zender's aztec warrior has special I would say uh, like significance and uh, I would say it's, it's borderline sacrilegious to remove something of such symbolism to the indigenous culture in Highland Park so the removal of the murals was sacrilegious that's the best way that I can say it and it was done in such a disrespectful unethical and illegal way they didn't go through protocol they didn't give us due process you know which is it was the ultimate and final slap in the face. And not only did they get removed, but the artists didn't get notification. So it was just done in the most horrible way possible across the board. Yeah, because they just like, because I know they went to Sidio's office yeah. and they made a complaint. Right. And Sidio's office uh, followed up and Cultural Affairs stated that they were registered and that, you know, so they didn't reach out to nobody. They just were like, you know what? I don't like these uh, murals and I'm they just going to erase them. They didn't reach out to the artists and they didn't reach out to the community. There was no public document, public posting of any kind on social media or in person stating that these pieces were going to be removed. And if we would like to go at least photograph them and document them. It was done in such a entitled manner. That's why the community is so angry. And that's how we came together to fight against the people who took them down. Yeah. When Yahara actually sent me what was going down today, what we were planning to do, what we were hoping to represent, it really touched me because it really was what I saw on these walls that got me into doing artwork, to expressing myself, into actually leading other people to express themselves and find who they are through their own form of art. And to see that there's just base walls here now is a travesty. It's sad. It's it's a showing of how art culture isn't being perpetuated in this day and age by the people who are coming here. 
people have no respect for what this community was built on, what roots run here. They say that they're here for the betterment of this community, that they want to be integrated into the community, incorporate everybody, and that's not the truth. And that's a representation of that. It's sad. It's sad because these, this is generation of what we had here. Generation. My parents, my grandparents.